Good morning, Saints. Uh, the Lord sort of pressed something on my heart this morning. Um, I'm sure you guys have been celebrating all sorts of stuff that's been going on here with with the Trump administration, the refocus on trying to bless and support Israel. Uh, if you haven't seen the the little press thing that Haley Barber did, she's the U.S. representative to uh, the U.N. She just really, you know, <laughs> went after the behavior of the U.N. and their lack of support for Israel a few days back. And I mean, if you ever wanted to get fired up about our nation blessing Israel, <laughs> go <laughs> go find that clip. It's not hard to find. And, you know, I think it was Trump met with Netanyahu in the last few days here, and we've been making all sorts of moves to support Israel, besides all the other stuff. I mean, you know, he's he's trying to bring jobs back to America. He's, you know, put in all these Christian born-again folks into the administration, you know, on and on and on, and every time I hear one of those, I'm just like, yes. You know, it's such uh, a reversal from the last eight years that I just, <clears throat> you know, I praise the Lord for every one of those things that that come about. Um, but something else just runs in parallel <laughs> to all of that. And I mentioned this once in a video before, and I hope you guys give me grace. You know, I'm I mostly just speak from the heart and from what the Lord presses on my heart, or especially when it, he's put the bug in my brain about scripture. That's all this channel is, is my personal walk with the Lord and the scripture and the thoughts that he puts in my head. And if I think any of it's interesting, I try and record a video because it's not for me, it's for everybody. Even if I'm wrong and I cause you to go read the Bible, <clears throat> praise the Lord, right? I, that's all that's on my mind. So let me just share this and then hopefully you, you can keep this in the right spirit. I mentioned in a prior video, you know, is Trump going to bring us out of the ditch? <clears throat> and... I don't know. I sure wouldn't uh, renounce any any of these moves that he's making. National sovereignty, the whole nine, seems to be going against you know some of the themes that the Bible talks about. With the you know the one rule kingdom with ten regions, the ten toes of Daniel, and and all that, and so it looks like you know there's a reprieve of sorts and you know Tom Horn was very vocal a few weeks back he was on some of these you know shows saying that you know, this is a reprieve from the Lord a chance for a um, revival and all and I think he even said a year or two ago that he had that in a dream that this was going to happen and so May, you know, maybe that's where we're at, is a little respite. But the thing that was bugging me this morning, the thing that was bugging me a few weeks ago is we know the time we're living in. You know, the, the natural disasters keep escalating. The, um, the time... Uh, with Israel in the land is seven, you know, 70 years. It's coming up on us. We're in the Jubilee. You know, you guys know all the reasons why before this administration took over, everybody was looking at thinking it's any time now. None of that has changed. <laughs> it's only gone, you know, a few clicks forward and even more. And so I started to think about, Lord, you know, what is this? Is this a reprieve to let the Christians breathe easy for a second to uh, take back some of the ground that the evil one has taken. I mean, that is very possible, saints. I I just don't know. 
I was even thinking of passages here. Uh, you see it on the screen. This is after the midpoint of the tribulation. Let's keep everything in context, please. Um, For there shall rise false Christ, false prophets, and show many great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. And Matthew's Gospel, written for the Israelis, the Jewish people, the elect here, you know, refers to those that are going to be redeemed from Israel. But there's deception that comes with the end times. And so I started thinking about this. You know, earlier, the abomination of desolation is placed. And so when you see the the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, and, you know, everybody does videos on this, so I don't have to explain it. The temple is going to get rebuilt in Jerusalem, right? The Antichrist comes in at the midpoint of the, the tribulation period. If he follows the pattern of Antiochus Epiphanes from 167 BC, he erected a statue of Zeus in the most holy place and defiled the altar. Um, I think he slayed pigs. He might have even slayed people on the altar. And so that was a prototype of the abomination of desolation. And yet Jesus here says it's yet future when you see it, yet future. And so we know that that was just a pattern in 167 BC that this is, you know, what the Antichrist is going to do. And what, what was wheeling around my brain is, you know, this deception of Israel. Because it's not until the midpoint of the tribulation that they even push back against this guy that clearly, well, he he goes into the temple of God uh, saying that he is God. Is that in Thessalonians? You guys cut me some slack on that. Is that 2 Thessalonians 2? And so they let him right into the temple, and their radar doesn't go off until he starts declaring himself as God. And so... I think that this is something dangerous. This was the parallel thought in my brain. I'm, you know, praising all these things I'm seeing in terms of blessing Israel and talking about Genesis 12:3 and, you know, all these things. And yet, the parallel thought is that's exactly what the AC has to do with Israel. Is they have to see him as so blessing Israel that they, at least some good portion of the Jews, accept him to the point of even entering the temple. And, you know, was it Trump's son in law is converted to Orthodox Judaism? I don't want to talk about Trump and is he it and all. That's. Who knows? I don't know. I'm going to be out of here, saints. You're going to be out of here, Lord willing, uh, before we know the answer to that. So please, nobody put nasty comments on this video. I'm just sharing this parallel thought. Some aspect of what's going on right now has to be part of the end times. That's the point. The Jews have to be so comfortable with whoever becomes the Antichrist that they allow them right into the temple even to the point where he's bold enough to declare himself as God, right? Then, then what do they do? Then they, you know, fl- who, those who are in Judea catch the Jewish context. You Christian proclaimers that aren't born again, you won't be living in Judea to flee to the mountains. So take the context of Matthew. This is just my advice. Take it for who it's written to. They're fleeing to the mountains at the midpoint. And you see that again in Revelation 13, is it, or 12. Um, so that's the parallel thought is whoever becomes the Antichrist has to so bless Israel, support Israel, um, and all that, that, you know, that they, that they are brought into the temple. Now, some of the other things that's going through my brain, and again, please, I'm not picking on our current administration because I think what's going on is just phenomenal. But think of the other patterns in the Bible. The temple has to be built. 
it never could have been built under the animosity that was ginned up with the Obama administration and Israel. You know, think of all the hatred and all the stuff. Well, how do you get the temple built with what's going on? First, some segment of the you know Muslim population has to see it as a benefit, I would think, for that to be on the Temple Mount, uh, or else there's some massive security arrangement that allows it to be built that you know holds off the the hordes from from attacking it. But either way, there would have to be a lot of support for Israel for it to get built. There would have to be some agreement, some support for Israel, right, in terms of getting that built. And yet, we know things turn. You know, Zechariah 12 says all nations come against Israel at some point. And so, I don't know, is this the reprieve that we're in? That certain things happen, maybe the temple gets built or whatever, and then people turn against Israel. I don't know politically how that all works out. Maybe there's, you know, people talk about what if something bad happens to our president and the next guy that comes in right on the heels, you know, is the, you know, the evil one. So I'm not talking about the person of the current President Trump. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these parallel things that have to be. The temple has to get built, meaning the the political dynamic around Jerusalem has to change enough for the temple to be built. Is that part of this moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and making it okay for other countries which have expressed interest in doing the same to follow that pattern? Does that make it the international city? Is that the rationale for why you know the Jews leave the city and are, are pushed out into the field? Forget that's in uh, that's in the Old Testament. Boy, I want to say it was Micah. Maybe you guys forgive me on that one. But some of these things have to come to be. So Jerusalem has to be probably internationalized city. The boundaries have to be somehow defined such that um, you know the Jewish people can be pushed out of parts of the city that the temple can get built probably does mean it's going to get internationalized in some way. There has to be enough support for Israel, right, for that political dynamic to happen. The Jewish people have to accept the Antichrist, the bulk of them have to accept the Antichrist to the point of he can get all the way to the temple and declare himself as God. And so my thought is it can't be, you know, somebody in the pattern of the prior administration here in the U.S. Because, you know, the Jewish people saw how anti-Israel he was. And so I'm just putting that out there. And please, this has nothing to do with the current president. You know, we see people by their fruits. And right now I'd have to say, it's such a dramatic reversal on all fronts from the prior administration that all the fruits appear to be, you know, coming, you know, from the blessings from God. And so I, I don't want people to take this wrong. I just want to point out that there's this second thing, second set of things that has to happen in the end times. And you know what it brings to mind is when Jesus came the first time, one of the big reasons he wasn't accepted was the bulk of the Jewish people of the day expected the return. The Messiah was the return of like a King David-like person that was going to throw down the Roman government of the day and was going to rule on the throne from Jerusalem. You know, what we call the millennial reign to them was the kingdom of God, you know, coming from heaven to earth. Go recite the Lord's Prayer. You know, Jesus said the pattern of the prayer for the Jewish folks, the apostles that asked them, how do we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why was that important? Because the Jewish people in the Old Testament were promised 
that the Messiah was going to reign from the throne in Israel, that he'd be a descendant of King David, that he'd actually be the root of Jesse and the descendant of it. How does that happen, right? That's part of the, the gospel message that was missed, that he was going to restore the promised land grant of Abraham, right? All these things, the Davidic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, have to come to pass with the Messiah physically ruling from the throne in Israel. And so why did the Jewish people miss Jesus? Well, because there was a whole parallel other set of verses that were completely ignored. It was the verses about his suffering. You know, Isaiah 53, the, his death and apparent crucifixion recorded before the Romans popularized it. And so... I don't want to get caught up in the same thing. We know the end times is marked with deception. We know that whoever the Antichrist is, is actually going to be so embraced by Israel that you know they allow him right into the temple. It sure seems to me that he confirms, he enforces the covenant, Daniel 9, 27, for a week. If he's confirming and enforcing the covenant with the Jewish people, he's actually negotiating maybe on their behalf or at least in agreement with them with all the other nations. So you see all these other verses that we can't ignore, even though the current political climate seems to be this reprieve that the Lord has given us and I would say blessing about the pushback against the darkness that's encroaching on the world. But it doesn't necessarily not fit the pattern that the Bible talks about. Matter of fact, it's a necessary component. And so whether it's the next administration after you know Trump or whether somehow something is spawned out of the pushback against what Trump's trying to accomplish, I don't know. It's just, you know, we're so caught up in all these wonderful things we keep hearing day after day. We got to realize that, you know, we are still sitting even ever closer to the return of the Lord. And I personally, even though I'm tracking all these wonderful things, I keep getting reminded of, but yeah, but we're right there. As a matter of fact, some of these things have to come to pass before the church is taken. Well, as a matter of fact, the church could be taken at any time. It has to come to pass before the tribulation period starts. And in parallel, you guys know that a lot of these actions, you know, Iran is all ramped up. They're doing war games right now, pretend attacks against the U.S. imperialism or whatever they're pretending to attack. We've got North Korea you know, with the assassinations and stuff going on, that's going into crazy zone, right? None of that stuff has slowed down. I mean, matter of fact, you know, that whole thing with Ukraine and Russia, I'm dead confused. You know, Trump is getting blamed for, re, you know, supposedly collaborating with the Russians and all that. Well, if he really, if he really, was that pro-Russian? Why wouldn't all all the NATO troops can be get pulled back out of the Ukraine? I mean, that's right at Russia's border. If they were doing that in Canada or in Mexico at the U.S., you know, we would be having fits, right? And I know there's lots of dynamics I don't understand over there, but you know, our, our current insistence is still about Crimea, and yet we know was it like 80% Russian because of the former Soviet Union, you know, covered over Ukraine. I would imagine that the former Russian people that speak Russian probably prefer the Russian um, rule over the, the uh, coup that Obama orchestrated to put the current Ukraine government in place. I mean, I don't know the politics as well as probably some real insiders on that whole thing, but it's confusing to me if if uh, Trump is so pro-Russian, why NATO hasn't pulled troops back out of Ukraine. So, Saints, I'll just leave you there. I mean, let's celebrate all of these awesome things that are happening. You know, 
biblical things, the pushback against abortion, the pushback against the, you know, the immorality agenda that the prior administration had, the support for Israel, all these things. Let's celebrate all these things. But just keep in the back of your mind, at least this is my admonition to everybody, keep in the back of your mind that some of these things actually have to come to pass biblically so that we don't do what happened, you know, back in 30, whatever AD, when the Jewish people rejected Jesus because he was actually fitting the suffering servant passages more than he was fitting the return of the King David kind of passages from the Bible. Therefore, they rejected him when he came. We can't be caught up in thinking we're in the midst of a reprieve. The end times has been held back. <laughs> you know, all those things that have been uh, talked about recently with many pastors that teach this stuff. You know, take a deep breath. Revival is going to come. I don't know. I, I see some of these events as being necessary to fulfill those other verses that people don't want to talk about that that have to have to come to play. So God bless everybody. Um, yeah, just, you know, keep looking up. Amen.